Hi, I'm here today with the 8 Man Toro 4K action camera. It's an all new action camera. It's got some really interesting features. So here it is just out of the box. And as you see, that box feels like real quality. When I arrived, I thought it was, uh, didn't think it was an action camera. It's actually, it weighs quite a bit. The action camera itself, on the other hand, doesn't weigh quite so much, but it's got some really interesting features. So as you can see, camera itself looks pretty nice. I've got the old 8-man here, which is the 4K. And if I just put them side by side, very quickly, you'll see the new Taro is just slightly larger. I haven't lined those up perfectly, but you get the idea. Now, camera itself all looks very nice and sleek. Plastic seems okay quality, but the actual design and finish of the camera is exceptional for this price range. Now, one of the things which really stood out from the outset is this is the waterproof housing. And it's quite unlike any other waterproof housing I've come across. So it seems to have taken on board everything that I hate about uh, these type of cases and refined it. First of all, large lens here, easy to wipe clean, it's flat, big, wide, so hopefully that'll reduce any vignetting on the edges. Then it's got the side opening clip, much better than on the top. And it does have a small secondary lock here, but it's nice and big and it's easy to use even with gloves on. I've tried it out earlier. Now that lock's good and solid and it's got nice rubberized bits on the back to stop that uh, sort of shake and things. Now, if I open that up and it's oh, good and tight, you'll see that here inside they've got foam all around the lens, or it's rubber. And that just stops any rattle from the lens. So brilliant. Now for anyone living in the UK, we're a little bit prone to mud. And one of the biggest issue with these waterproof housing is the old sort of metal button spring, uh, which get clogged with mud. When you want to start, stop recording, change mode, you can't because mud's weaveled its way in. Here, they're absolutely flush. So, doesn't look like there's any way or possibility of mud getting into those. And if it does cake it, then a quick wipe, that should be clear to uh, go. As ever, it's got the GoPro style mount, so that all looks good and impressive. Now, camera itself, here it is. All looks pretty solid. We've got um, USB, HDMI on the side, uh, pretty standard stuff. Got battery in a hinged door here, so that's all nice good quality uh, navigation up and down power and shutter button all really simple just power that up powers up nice and quick then we have no sd card at the moment it's okay uh, and the interface and everything all look quite nice so just quick usual carousel type thing and here we've got video resolutions and all the other options. I'll bring you that in the full review at camerajabber.com very soon. But what it does have, video resolution 4K, 30 frames per second, 1080p at 16 frames per second, so that's quite standard. 720p, we can go up to 120 frames per second, get some great slow motion. That's all made possible by the Panasonic MN34120 image sensor, and that's coupled with a high silicon HI3559 uh, processor. So, so it's a combination we're starting to see more and more of, and actually it's producing some absolutely fantastic results. On the front here is 170 degree field of view lens, and this has an aperture of f1.8. So nice and wide, allow plenty of light to flood in there. Um, it also shoots stills up to 20 million pixels, um, and that's about it. Uh, obviously battery life is uh, pretty good. I'll be able to confirm how long that is once I take it out on the road. But as an overview, initially it's really quite exciting. That extra size and bulk um, doesn't really seem to put me off at all. Um, and I'll bring you video quality and test results very soon. If you've got any questions or comments, please let me know in the box below um, or head on over to camerajabber.com for more details.